Hello, everyone. My name is Erin Hardick. I'm the lead research analyst at Z Prime. I am here for a Z Prime Now interview with Teron Hill, who is the Director of Asset Development and Policy at National Grid US. Teron, thank you for joining me today. I know you've had quite a hectic past 24, 48 hours because of the hurricane up in the Northeast. What have you been up to? How have you guys been dealing with that? Well, whenever we have um, um, increment weather that affects our customers, this this storm we had roughly about 300,000 customers out at the height. So our number one priority becomes getting those customers back on, online. So even um, people that day jobs are much different than operations like myself, we help out with logistics. We help in the background to make sure that the people in the field have what they need in order to get our customers back online. And what is, what is your typical day job when you're not kind of in uh, emergency response? So typically it's, it's really about looking at the future of the electricity network. So my team is really focused on grid innovation, looking at new technologies that we can pour on our networks or to really facilitate that renewable clean energy future. So I have a team of engineers that are looking at doing studying work, looking at new technologies, a team of policy and strategy analysts that are looking at do we need to change our tariffs, our cost recovery, our regulatory frameworks? And also run our compliance team as well, looking at um, NERC reliability compliance. And one of those technologies that has been talked about a lot lately, especially when it comes to resiliency, is storage, battery storage. And you guys have a project out in Nantucket where you have a battery out there. Can you tell, tell me about the Nantucket battery storage system? Sure. Well, I think the Nantucket Battery Energy Storage Solution is probably one of the most innovative energy storage projects in the country. It is the largest energy storage project here in the Northeast at 48 megawatt hours. And it really is what was meant to really solve a need um, that we have on the island where it's the fastest growing load on our system, the fastest growing electricity demand. And so the New England load is really rough, rough, roughly flat, but in Nantucket, it's growing at about 2% a year. And that growth is really we really see it during the summer months. So between Memorial Day and Labor Day, where people are traveling to the island. So typically we have about 10,000 residents on the island. During the summer, we can have up to 60,000 um, oh. population. And so because of that, we really need to make sure that we could secure the, the network on Nantucket. Um, as you can imagine, having electricity outages during the summer can be a huge economic um, problem for the island. And so in looking at solutions to solve the increasing demand, um, there were only a few solutions we could really look at. Energy efficiency, obviously, is the first one that we looked at, and we are doing some energy efficiency programs in order to really flatten that peak. Um, but the, the second thing is that the island is served by two undersea um, transmission cables. And with those two undersea transmission cables, is if we lose one of those cables during the summer, we can't serve the island. So we looked at building a third cable, but building a third transmission cable would be extremely costly, roughly $200 million. And the, the population of the island will pay that. And so we were like, what can we do in order to make sure that we can keep the lights on during the summer months, but not incur that kind of, of cost? And so energy storage became a very obvious solution that we started exploring. Like we had to make sure that we could still charge the battery, even with one cable in operation. And so we, set, we looked at the load patterns and looked at the load demand in order to figure out what would be the optimal size for the battery. And that's how we came up with a six megawatt, eight hour duration battery. So aside from ruling out building that third transmission cable, were there other options that you ended up mixing and uh, choosing the battery storage system over? And can you maybe talk about why you decided those weren't the right fit? So we currently we have a, a diesel combustion turbine island, and that, that is still there. And we actually rebuilt it in order to be slightly larger than it is today. Um, because it was facing tons of asset condition issues. And then we coupled that with the battery too. Now we could have just did a completely um, diesel solution, but when we looked at the um, both the economic costs as well as the environmental costs of that solution, we decided that, hey, that really isn't the best when it comes to our clean energy future. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also looked at distributed resources throughout the island, um, which is a, a solution that many um, on the island are, are going forward with. People are doing tons of, of home top, um, rooftop storage. Um, in some parts of the island, because of some of the historical rules, that's harder for parts of the island. And we will actually have to be able to penetrate the entire island, which will have made a logistical nightmare 
than just being able to put the energy storage at our substation. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's a combination of your, your diesel generator, the distributed storage, and then your big utility scale battery. Exactly. Very good. I think, you know, talking with utilities, it is going to be the future of the grid is going to be a combination of all these technologies. It's not going to just be, you know, one specific technology. It's not just utility scale battery storage. It's not just distributed maybe solar and storage systems, but a combination of all of these things, because if you rely on just one technology, then it does drastically impede your ability to be resilient. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. And the, the other thing besides just resilience is that flexibility that we need for the grid of the future. One of the things that is one of the most uncertain parts of our energy future is what will demand look like in the future? When you think about the move towards decarbonization, possibly home home heating that's electrified, electric vehicles, we really don't know what that demand is going to look like. So we want solutions that allow us the best flexibility and, and allow us to really use all resources to the, the highest value and benefit they give to customers. Very good. Well, thank you, Teron, for joining me. I know, like you said, you've been super busy trying to get everybody back online, and I wish you guys the best of luck in doing that. And I look forward national grid does in the future i know that this conversation of uh the triple bottom line is starting to creep into the utility mm -hmm. industry economic uh financial and social responsibility so it's it's really interesting to see how it's really affecting utility business models and it sounds like national grid taking that seriously absolutely well thank you